Welcome back to Beatrice Orangemen football. It's fourth and very long for Elkhorn North. They had an incomplete pass in the third quarter by Johnny Ferguson. Pass was intended for the tight end, Ben Perotto. And now they'll have to punt it away. Chase Lofton to punt. And standing back, can't quite see who that is. Standing back to return the kick. Lofton, a deep kick, high in the air. This one's bouncing at the 21 to the 20. Takes a nice Beatrice bounce, but it'll end up dying away at the 21-yard line, and that's where Beatrice will start the drive. Tonight's game is brought to you by Husker Rehab in Beatrice, Fairbury, Nebraska City, as well as three locations in Lincoln, Beatrice Community Hospital and Health Center, Claybuff Pharmacy and Gift Shop, Diode Communications and Diller, Homestead House, Your Life, Your Style, and Plymouth Irrigation, your local Zomatic dealer. All right, 11.47 to go in the game. 21-3, Elkhorn North leads it over Beatrice. Elkhorn North, if you're just joining us, ranked number two in the preseason rankings in Class B for Nebraska high school football. It's first and ten all the way back at their own 20-yard line. If you're going to go, you better go now. <laughs> you, know, you got down three scores, you got to do something. They hand it off on an end around to Luke Hamilton, who's wrapped up on the far sideline, gain of about one yard will make it second and nine. At the 22. At the same time, though, I mean, you, you definitely do have to tip the cap to Elkhorn North so far. They've been very sound defensively. Oh, they have been so good defensively. Yeah. they got a lot of guys. I mean, you, they're really long, too. You can see that. Just yeah. big guys up front. They're, a deep, they're also a deep team. Yeah, and their, their corners are big, yeah. and, and they can run. Got some really good guys out there, Elkhorn North. A few D1 offers from a few schools for these players. Here's a second and nine from the 22 for the Orangemen. Mainz takes a snap. It's a screen pass. Caught there by Trey Henning on the near sideline. He is wrapped down and brought down with some force there. The tackle made by Tommy Mechna. And I think that might be a loss of about one yard on the pass. And I apologize. He was intended there for Luke Hamilton. He loses a yard on the screen. Now it's going to be third and ten. Wow, what a defensive coverage yeah. there for Elkhorn North. And now I think you might as well just take a shot here. You got Trey Henning lined up here, and I believe he's on the far sideline, matched up against Tommy Mechner, the cornerback. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Crew Mines takes a shot here to either Luke Hamilton, Trey Henning. We get a referee blowing the whistle, a timeout by Elkhorn North. They didn't like the formation, and there's a timeout with 10.24 to go on the quarter number four. Third and ten coming up. We'll take a timeout, too. Listening to Beatrice Football on KWB. <laughs> Welcome back to the football on Queeby 94-7. Early in quarter number four and an 18-point lead for Elkhorn North leading it over the Beatrice Orange men. Their first game of the season. Beatrice will be on the road in their next game next Thursday at Gross. Then they'll be playing at Waverly, both top ten teams. Then they'll be playing at home against Lincoln Northwest. Elkhorn North will be, on, will be at home against Lincoln Northwest next week. Then they'll be at Crete. So third and ten at the 21-yard line. Big play coming up here for this Beatrice offense. They play action with Mainz. Mainz a screen pass, and it's dropped on the screen by John Reason, who had a bunch of open space. He had a ton of green grass ahead of him. If he makes the catch, it's fourth and ten. Man, you Heard Close me, call. Heard me groan. Yeah, I did. I, did. I saw you groan too. You uh, put your hands up yeah, a little bit. Because it was oh, there, he had room to run. He if did. He got that. That would have been. That was a great play call. Yeah. Just couldn't get it to complete it. See, and those were the early season, maybe maybe a little bit of early season rust coming out there. I think you get those plays worked yeah. out later in the season. I had pressure too, but man, yeah. it's just the that real close one, a little bit of the other way, and you have had a whole different conversation. Trey Henning to punt. Oh, it was almost blocked there, but he gets it off, and it bounces at the 45 all the way down. Jeez. It's like the ball is just favoring Beatrice on these punts. It goes all the way to the 24-yard line. He had really big, nice punt. Yeah, big pressure again. Too. Yeah, they did. Tonight's and I saw one of them. Sorry to cut you off. I saw one of them, Tyler Murphy, the senior, getting in there almost blocking the punt. Yeah, I mean, he, he, I, you get that off, and you can get it that far. Like, eh, good for you. I mean, good for you. I, yeah. I certainly couldn't do that. Tonight's game is brought to you by Taco John's as well as Landmark Implement with 16 locations across Nebraska and northern Kansas to serve you. Members on Credit Union, Dale's Auto Electric, 
as well as Plaza Ridge Dental for the smiles in your world. First and ten from the 24 for Elkhorn North in their own territory. You got Jet Tinglehoff lined up behind Ferguson. Two receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Take the snap on first and ten. They fake the handoff, keeping it as Ferguson. He powers forward for a short gain of about one yard. It'll be second and nine at the 25. Yeah, Run I mean, up the gut, a QB keep. They've got it. They got under ten now too. So yep. the clock is there, buddy. With Might three, as well up, run up the three clock. scores. Yeah. So there, I wouldn't think they would vary too much. Beatrice just needs to get the ball back. I mean, however you can get it back. So three and out, or you know, fumble, get a strip, something. I can't see Elkhorn North changing too much. Got on timeout. the tackle there, Silas Benson and Gage Walter for Beatrice. We got a timeout on the play. Let's see. I don't know if this is an official timeout, and I think it is. Oh, we got an injured Elkhorn North player, and this actually might be Johnny Ferguson here. I think he's cramping, but that is our starting quarterback who is down right now. And, I mean, this is just a really tough situation. I, Being a neutral bystander for Elkhorn North, you'd never want to see an injured player, let alone a starting quarterback. Yeah, so they're kind of doing the the um, pretty standard cramp stretch. Yeah. Like, and honestly, honestly, even as a Beatrice fan, you hope it's just a cramp. Yeah, I'm, it's looking like it. Um, I'll be honest, I don't think I've ever covered a football season where in the first or second week there was not a cramp. Yeah. <laughs> so we're actually doing pretty good for tonight. I mean, really. <laughs> Only one cramp fourth so quarter, far. One, uh, first cramp of, uh, in the fourth quarter. got to be quarter. some sort of record. Yeah. So he'll pop up. Yeah, I think he's okay. Glad to see that. You never, especially with an 18-point lead, I mean, you just never want to see a starting quarterback injured like that. And he will gladly take him out think, for a few plays. But Yeah, I don't think he's going to play. Well, actually, he's walking around like he wants to continue playing. And they're going to just send him off. They, I don't blame the coaches here. I mean, he, he's a fighter, Johnny Ferguson. This is his first start as quarterback for Elkhorn North in his high school career. But he uh, he's a fighter, and he wanted to stay out there and give himself an opportunity to play. And the coaching staff was like, come on. Not so fast. I think they're going to make you work the first week, aren't they? Who's their quarterback now? Who do we got? Yeah, they're going to turn to number five, Ethan Bleachy, the sophomore. He'll get some reps here in the quarterback position. Bleachy takes a snap, quick throw. It's a screen pass and making the catch and falling down. Chase Lofton on the far sideline. Quick gain of about a yard out to the 26 and it's going to be third and long third and seven officially first play out yep. hey we'll throw it hey get out let our guy throw get it out here. There. there's no reason not to <laughs> ethan bleachy just a sophomore he's playing in a game here in week zero with the crowd looking on and you never know i mean you got a senior in johnny ferguson if he graduates you never know ethan bleachy might be the starting quarterback next year for elkhorn north yeah still so far away though you got Tingle off lined up to the left. Bleachy takes a snap. We got a flag on the play. It's going to be a false start on Elkhorn North. Yep, false start. Elkhorn North, that was all the way over to the left side of the offensive line, and I believe the false start is going to be on Sam Huff, the left tackle. Look at Coach Keezer. Well, he's, he's calmed down a second, but, man, <laughs> he's pumped. I get, oh, he is pumped. Don't tell Coach Keezer this game is over. He is, nope. not, he is not trying to hear that right now. And you got to love that if you're a Bastard fan, too. Like, <laughs> exactly. No, we're going until the end. I mean, he was pumped. They got that false start. He's looking for good field position here. Get the ball back and make something happen. Yeah, make a play. Eight and a half minutes to go in quarter number four. Ball at the 21. Third and long. It's third and 12. The backup quarterback, the sophomore, Ethan Bleachy on the field. Bleachy takes a snap, hands it off to Tinglehoff, who cuts up field into the secondary. Tinglehoff stays on his feet on the near sideline. Gets out of bounds at the 35-yard. That's a first down. Are you kidding me? That's a backbreaker. Wow, he was supposed to. Looks like he was going to go out of bounds at the 30. And you know what? He might have stepped out of bounds. It's really close. Oh, boy. Yep. I mean, they're going to move the chains. Yeah, but if him. he got stopped at the 30, it would have been a fourth down and short. Since he gets to the 35, that's a first down, and my goodness, that is a crushing blow. We well, also got a Beatrice player down, unfortunately. Yeah, there was a huge hole on that right side. Yeah. And uh, then from there, you know, the last five, six yards, it was just all him. Man, this really, is... really tough break for Beatrice. And then 
you got to play her down. And you know what? We'll just take a break. 21-3 is the score with 8.13 to go in the fourth. You're listening to Beatrice Orangeman Football on Queeby 94.7. All right, welcome back to Beatrice, a Friday night week zero game on Queeby 94-7. Late in the, or about midway through this fourth quarter, 8-13 to go. 21-3 is the lead for Elkhorn North over Beatrice. So if you're just joining us, let's go through a little recap as the injured player for Beatrice was number one, Bo Spilker, the senior. But he uh, hopped up off his own power. I think he's just cramping, so he should be good to go and come out later in the game. First and 10 for Elkhorn North at their own 34-yard line. Still out in the field is Ethan Bleachy, or rather rather Ethan Beachy, the uh, backup quarterback, sophomore. He'll hand it off to Tinglehoff, busting up field and finds some Uh space on the far sideline. Tinglehoff out to the 45 and the 50 before he's wrestled down a midfield at the 49-yard line. It's a really nice pickup of about nearly 20 yards. It was really well blocked there by Elkhorn North. I mean, he really I mean, you get a guy like that with speed anyway to get the corner like that, that's problems. Yeah. I mean, this guy is having himself a field day and actually, if you didn't know, the most highly anticipated Nebraska high school football game of the season heading into the preseason is Elkhorn North versus Bennington, the rematch of the playoff game last season, the defending state champs versus the number 2 team. It's pretty much number 2 versus number 1. It doesn't happen though until the second to last game of the season. But, I mean, this team, super good, and they'll be playing some tough teams this year trying to go for a state title, Elkhorn North and Beatrice. They'll be trying to make the postseason again. They hand it off on, an, on a handoff to, Ting, to Tinglehoff, who cuts up field and gets inside the 45 to the 42. It's a solid gain of about seven yards. It'll be second and three. Tonight's game is brought to you by Zollner Ford. Sheer quality furniture. When you're ready for quality, you're ready for sheer. Adams Optical Fashions, Homestead Land Company and Beatrice and Fairbury, and Sat Brothers of Philly Creek, Lincoln, Humboldt, and Hanover, Kansas. Yeah, and I mean, Tinglehoff last season, 228 yards rushing this season, and just one game alone, he's probably had nearly, probably about 125 yards of rushing. So he's about to break that season that he had last year, probably in the first possible two to three weeks of the year. Yeah. And you can tell, too, that line has kind of established yeah. themselves now, too. And, and when you give guys like this, who's just super quick, that space, he's going to do some stuff to you. Beachy to the handoff to Tinglehoff, and they'll get a flag on the play. It might be a false start on, B- on Elkhorn North. It's going to be a delay of game on Elkhorn North. Second down and a loss of five yards on the play off the penalty. And, I mean... This team, Elkhorn North, they got a lot of returning players. And, I mean, the coach talked very, very highly. You got multiple seniors who were freshmen when the school opened. And you got some really good players, including Tinglehoff, who has just taken this game into his own hands tonight. It's going to be second and eight now after the five-yard penalty. And they're still really pretty young. I mean, looking up and down this roster, there's I mean, there's, there's some seniors, but a lot of youth still. Yeah. And that might be another false start here on Elkhorn North. <laughs> Luckily, they called that one. That was pretty much the entire offensive line that false started on the play before the center, Brock Marler, snapped the ball. So yeah. another loss of, of yards on the play, and it'll be second and long all the way back at the Elkhorn North 48-yard line. Definitely helps. I mean... Crazier things have happened. I mean, but right now Elkhorn North is getting done what they want to do, which is run that clock. Yeah, they're doing a phenomenal job. Six and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. 18 point Elkhorn North lead. This team seven and four last season. Beatrice was three and six. Taking the snap, he handed off to Tinglehoff, who cuts and bounces to the outside of the far sideline, getting the corner and getting out of bounds inside the 45, down to the 44. A nice pickup of about eight yards on the play, and it's going to be third and four, or rather third and five, correction. Man, if he he gets that corner, I mean, that's scary just because he's he's fast. I mean, he's got real speed. I mean, the corner there, it was far side of the field, so we couldn't quite see it, but, um, man, uh, that's going to go on tape, and that's going to get defensive coordinators... Uh, Furious yeah. and looking over the play. How Losing a little sleep that? probably that week. <laughs> and a great blocking by the wide receivers as well. On third and six, they'll hand it off to Tinglehoff again. He cuts up field and nice tackling there 
No gain on the play, and it'll be fourth and five. Nice tackling there by the defensive line of the Orangemen. You got Jacob Scholl in there, Gage Walter, Silas Benson, all able to make the tackle. And then you got a timeout for Beatrice on fourth and five. We'll take a timeout, too. You're listening to Beatrice, Men, Beatrice Orangemen football on Queeby 94-7. Welcome back to Beatrice Orangemen football on Queeby 94-7. Late in the fourth quarter, it's going to be fourth and five for Elkhorn North at the Beatrice 45, and they'll punt the ball away. Chase Lofton to punt. On to return, looks like it might be Luke Hamilton, number five. So fourth and five, they'll punt this one from their own 41-yard line. Chase Lofton, high kick. Fair catch signal as it bounces at the 15 and goes in the end zone. Luckily for Beatrice's sake, it's a touchback. It'll be taken at the 20-yard line with 5.52 to go in quarter number four, 21-3, Alcorn North. Tonight's game is brought to you by Taco Johns of Beatrice, Chris Toledo with Brick and Mortar Realty, Zollner Ford, and Claussen and Sons Dirtwork, as well as Premier Chevrolet, Buick, GMC of Beatrice. Discover the premier difference. So we got an official's timeout on the play, maybe trying to spot the ball. They're talking about something, and I think we're going to play some football pretty soon here, hopefully. Taco John sounds good. Do they have Taco John's in Lawrence? They did have a Taco John's. It's pretty good. Yeah. I really like it. It's been a minute. Maybe I need to swing in after the game. <laughs> no, no, it's seriously. I would highly recommend it. It's a very good restaurant. <laughs> I mean, talking about those ads, it might get you hungry during this yeah. game. Oh, I've... I've I've been to the Beatrice one, no doubt, no doubt, many a day, many a time. <laughs> First and ten, a low snap taken by Mainz. He rolls to the far side, and Ooh. the throw is overthrown, intended for Trey Henning on the far sideline, incomplete. That's sort of frustrating because that one was there, too, you know. Just he had to throw it up and over a defender just a little, so he had to lead it. Yeah. And, uh, man, it, but it was there. You know, I think that pass was actually intended for the tight end, Trevin Lang, but he overthrew him, that and then yeah, that Trey Henning too. almost yeah. made the catch. But it was underthrown for him, overthrown for the tight end, underthrown for the wide receiver. It's just that like the little stuff a few times here and there, you know, like the screen, you know, just the things that are close but just not quite there yet. Crew Mainz goes five wide, two receivers on the near side, three on the far side. Take the snap. Mainz to run. Mainz gets to the outside, and oh, he is banged as he's tackled, almost a sandwich tackle there, a gain of about one yard on the play. The tackle there coming in from number 86, Tommy Mechna, and a few other Elkhorn North defenders as well. It's going to be third and nine. Wow. I mean, he got sandwiched on there. He got hit hard. Yeah, I, I think that was a broken play. I don't, I don't know what yeah, it I was. Think so. but Because one of the receivers just kind of stood there, which is odd. Usually if you're if yeah. you're going to do that, you know you got to be blocking or something. And, and, and so something wasn't right there. So it's going to be third and nine. And you got... John Reason lined up behind Mainz. And you got two receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Tight end lined up in the slot. Take the snap, Mainz to throw. Throw it out to the outside. Trey Henning, a catch on the near side, out to the 34-yard line, and that is complete for a first down. So move the chains for Beatrice. Yeah, pretty ball. I mean, that was a really nice throw, and then Trey Henning basically did a comeback route right at the sticks. I mean, he's been the guy that crew's been looking for tonight. He has been the guy. And, I mean, you want to see some other guys definitely making some plays, too, to help out Mainz and Henning. But, honestly, Henning and Mainz are doing a great job, and we'll see what other receivers can do as well. you got two lined up. you got Reason in motion. They'll hand it off to Reason, who goes to the far side and powers his way forward for a gain of about three yards out to the 47 and it'll be second and seven for Beatrice with under five minutes to go in the fourth quarter. 21-3, to three, Elkhorn North is the score over your Beatrice Orangeman. Yeah, and then just time's not their friend. Nope. I mean, if they're going to really make a move, they've got to probably pick up the pace a little bit. But you also have to practice that either, so that's something different, I think, yeah. in high school football too. You got five wide now. Tight end lined up like he's blocking. Five wide for Mainz. Takes a snap. Acts like he's going to throw. Takes off and said. Gets some blocks. Gets to the near sideline. Cuts up field to the 45 and gets out of bounds. That's going to be a first down for Beatrice out to the 45-yard line. A solid pickup 
of about seven yards on the play for Crew Mainz. Yep, so that was a designed QB run. Yep. Uh, chains are moving and clock stopped. It's a good deal. Yeah. You can never complain when the clock stops, especially when you're right trailing now. in the fourth yeah, quarter. Right now, for sure. 4.23 is the official time to go in the fourth. First and 10 from their own 45-yard line for Beatrice. You got two receivers lined up to the far side, two on the near side. Mainz takes a snap, fakes the throw. Now we'll take a deep shot. Trey Henning's down there, and it's overthrown. Trey Henning was at the 25. The ball hit down at the 22. Wow, and they were going for Trey Henning, and he had his man beat. He, he, was, he was going up against the safety... Nathan Kaderna, and he had Kaderna beat. Would have been a touchdown if he had if he made the catch. And I think in the backfield, if, if Crew maybe just had about a half a second longer, that, that might be a whole different deal. But, I mean, Elkhorn North's done a nice job of getting pressure tonight, and they got just enough there, too, to throw it off just enough. Yeah, and that's one of the things that head coach Sam, Sam Stanley was talking about in the pregame interview, how important it was to get pressure to the quarterback and make him feel uncomfortable. I think it's safe to say that when Crew Mainz has thrown the football tonight, he has felt uncomfortable with this defensive yeah. line. Man in motion. They fake the handoff to Luke Hamilton. Mainz rolls and throws it to Hamilton, but Hamilton wasn't looking in the flat, and it's incomplete third and ten. Yep, same thing. Pressure there again. Um, I think there was a rollout with a primary option that was taken away by Elkhorn North, and he didn't have where, or really anywhere to go with it. 4.14 to go. And yeah, it was immediate defensive line pressure right there getting in to try and make the tackles number 17 ben madrigal as well as number 50 sam huff and i mean how many times have we said have we said sam huff's name tonight he has been all over the place defensively for elkhorn north i mean just look down that line too i'm yeah. sure there's not a guy that's under six one no, i mean yeah. they're just big dudes here's the snap taken by by crew Mainz. he'll take off and run with it himself he gets across the 40 down to the 39-yard line. First down, Beatrice. It was a QB run. It was Mainz looking down the field. Didn't see anybody and took it off himself and down the near sideline. Yeah, and it, this was a vertical thing. I, I'm not sure what every route was, but I know all the receivers were basically going deep. And so when the pocket collapsed around him, he just took off and, and took what the defense gave him. Ball at the 39-yard line in Elkhorn North Territory. Beatrice getting a little offensive drive going here with 4.07 to go in the fourth. Coming off the field on a substitute is Bo Spilker. He was doing he was doing sprints up and down the field. I think he's one of the guys that was cramping up yep. back on defense. So Bo Spilker comes out. You got two receivers on the far side, two on the near side. And you got John Rees in the running back in the backfield. They fake the handoff, keeping it his minds. He cuts up field up the middle and picks up about three yards down to the 37. Second and seven for Beatrice. I think Beatrice, I mean... If you get, I mean, this is four down territory. There's no doubt Definitely. about it. Because yeah. you want to get a touchdown, even if you don't win the game, you want to get a touchdown just for pride's sake, just to bring you into the game next week on the road against the top five team in the state it and would give look, your offense a little bit of confidence. It would look better. It really would. <laughs> if you lose, if you end up falling 21 to 10, and plus, if you get a touchdown, who, who knows? You go for an onside kick and try to win the football game. You might as well. I'm sure co you know, coaches are looking for, you know, you hear coaches and people talk about that sometimes too, with like the little advantages. Like, guys, yeah. we didn't play that well, and we played the number two team within 10 or whatever, you know? <laughs> I mean, all that stuff. Mines takes a snap. It's a QB run. Cuts up field and picks up about two yards on the gain. Gets to the 38-yard line, and it's third and, I believe, third and seven now. Had one of the linemen. It's going to be Sam Huff who gets the tackle. Yeah, I think he's good. Well, he's going to come off. Yeah, Benson kind of is holding his knee there for a second. Uh, I think he's good, though. I think he's just going to get a play here. Yeah, Silas Benson has been out there all night long. And the offensive line, line and actually the defensive line as well for Beatrice. He's been getting, getting on the ball defensively and offensively as well. He's been all over the place. You can say that about a lot of guys as well for both squads. Mainz takes a snap, looks to the near side, gets pressured. Now he'll throw it deep to Henning, and it's in and out of the hands of the cornerback Tommy Mechna, who almost had the pick. Incomplete, and it's fourth down. Yeah, if, I mean, it's so easy to say up here. Get a little arch on that and throw it deep. I mean, it's dangerously close to getting picked off. That was almost in a double coverage as yeah. well. But it was just a desperation throw, it seemed like, by Mainz, yeah. who was getting pressured off the edge. Of the defensive line. I do like how he I just he tries to make things. I mean, it's like for the most part tonight, that's the most dangerous throw he's had. Yeah. So, timeout for Beatrice on fourth down and eight with 
about three minutes to go on the fourth. We'll take a quick break with them. You're listening to Beatrice Orangeman Football on Queeby 94.7. Okay, welcome back to Beatrice Orangeman Football on Queeby 94.7. They'll go for it on fourth and eight with the two and a half minutes to go. This is pretty much the ball game here. If you don't get this, there might not be a chance for a comeback. So fourth and eight. Crew Mainz takes the snap. Falls back, pressured off the edge, breaks the tackle, gets out to the 50. He'll take a deep shot down the field, and it's incomplete. Incomplete intended for Taylor Schaaf on the play in the slot, and it's a turnover on downs at the Elkhorn North 37-yard line. It was a good play. It was pressured by Sam Huff off the right edge, and Mines did a good job keeping the play alive. And that's the thing. Even if Beatrice falls tonight to Elkhorn North, can we just take a minute to realize how well Crew Mines has played tonight in the quarterback position, his first start as a quarterback in his high school career? Yeah, definitely considering the pressure. I mean, he's probably not going to have a huge stat line, but, I mean, he didn't turn it over. Yep. And that, that's pretty important with a ton of pressure. And, and he made stuff happen when he could. You know, he yeah. made things happen. So He's done a good job rushing the football. After week too. one, well, after week zero, <laughs> uh, he's going to be battle-tested. I mean, this, yeah. is, this, is, this is the best in the class right here. Yep. Elkhorn North to start from their own 37-yard line. Ferguson's back in the game, hands it off to Tinglehoff, who gets met in the backfield for a loss of three yards. Nice play there from the Beatrice defensive line to make the tackle. A few orange men were in there, including, from what I can see, number 44, Colton Herfel, the middle linebacker. A few defensive linemen were in there as well, including Takeo Glenn. The 6'2", 252, senior, and had four tackles last year. Elkhorn North will be able to pretty well run this down. I mean, there's not much. Yeah. I mean, if you get a first down, it's definitely over. Yep. Um, Second down and 13 from their own 35-yard line with less than a minute 40 to go in the fourth. They'll let the clock run all the way down. Man in motion is Tinglehoff. They take the snap, running it himself as the quarterback. Johnny Ferguson gets to the near side, cuts up field, and gets a solid gain on the play of about of about 14 yards. He gets all the way out to the 44-yard line. Third down. And that's not actually 14 yards. It's actually going to be seven yards. Math is hard. We all know this. <laughs> this, is why we bec- this is why we become broadcasters. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, I'm not I didn't fair. do too well in math class, if you, if you can tell. I'm not a big fan. <laughs> no, me neither. No, me neither. <laughs> That's why I tried to avoid it at all costs. Here's the third down and four play at about the 44-yard line for Elkhorn North. If they get a first down, they'll end the game. 50 seconds to go on the fourth. Ferguson with Tinglehoff behind him. They hand it off. Actually, it's going to be a run for a first down. They pick up five yards on the play. Nice run there from number 30, Kyle Witt. And how fitting is it that the senior, Kyle Witt, who has gotten chunk plays on the run after chunk plays, ends the game with 34 seconds to go. I think Elkhorn North can run one more QB kneel and finish the job here on yeah. this week zero game against the Orangemen. They Orange might not even have to run it. I guess we'll 20 seconds it. to go. Be close. And we'll see Ferguson walk up to his offensive line, and I think they're having a little bit of confusion. They haven't actually run a play here. Yeah. They actually might actually run a running play. Nope, Ferguson takes a knee back at his own 42-yard line, and that will do it with five seconds and four. And the clock will hit triple zeros with Elkhorn North starting their season 1-0 and and Beatrice falling to 0-1 in this week zero showdown on a Friday night on August 18th, 2023. Final score, Elkhorn North 21, Beatrice 3. Any final thoughts? You know, I mean, it, it just couldn't get anything going offensively, but Beatrice did not look like, I mean, for playing one of the top teams in the state, they didn't look out of place. I mean, really, for the most part, penalties, they were pretty clean. They, they played pretty well there. So it just happened to play the second-ranked team in the state to open your year. So overall, you know, um, kind of encouraged in a way. I mean, I think there's going to be some stuff. Um, I thought I was kind of hoping they'd have it a little closer, but ultimately, Beatrice has got some stuff to work with, and hopefully they have a pretty good year. Yeah, and you cannot talk about this game and forget about the performance from wide receiver Trey Henning, quarterback crew Mainz, a few defensive players as well who made some good pass breakups, including Luke Hamilton and Gavin Vanover. But this Elkhorn North team, which is ranked number two in the state, 
was just a little too much tonight for Beatrice to handle. And you know what? you got to say Beatrice put up a heck of a fight. It was a 14-3 to scoreline at the half, and they only allowed seven points in the second half. Seven. Right. Right. I mean, I think you're going to see Elkhorn and North hang some scores on some people if you're yeah. checking around the state this year. So, I mean, yeah, there's stuff that I'm sure Coach Keiser is going to want to have a little better, but for the most part, um, you know, I think it, I think it was not – it could have been way worse. I'll put it like that. I mean, I think they played pretty hard and they played pretty well, just didn't quite have the guns to get them tonight. Elkhorn North huddled up, getting a talking to by their head coach, Sam, Sam Stanley, all the way at the 20, and then Beatrice getting a talking to by head coach Keiser at the 50. Well, the final score here, Elkhorn North 21, Beatrice 3. That's the final, and a phenomenal performance by Elkhorn North, who will improve to 1-0 on the season. So we'll send it to a quick break. Final score 21 3, and we'll be back here for, a, for an interview after this on Queeby 94 7. All right, welcome back to Beatrice on Queeby 94 7. The final score is Elkhorn North 21, Beatrice 3. So any any final thoughts that you haven't said already that you that you'd like to say? Not 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 a lot. I mean, I think I think the line play for the most part um, is good. I think that was one thing you're kind of watching. So stick with them. They got a tough schedule, but if they can pull off some wins at the start of the year, I mean, I think they could get it rolling. Yeah, they do have a little bit of a tough schedule. They're playing in their first three games on the road for two of them at home for this one. They're playing three of the top five teams in the state. <laughs> So if that's any indication to how tough their schedule is so far. Uh, I don't know that. what else I have to yeah, say. <laughs> I was going to say, you can't say you won't be ready in the end of the year then, you know? Yep, I mean, no, no, they're going to be ready. Yeah, you'll pretty much when see it the all. When they make playoffs, yeah. they're going to be battle-tested, and they're yeah. going to be experienced, to say the least. Well, Beatrice will play next Thursday at Gross, and that'll be right here on Queeby 94.7, and Jake Bartecki will be back for that one. I was actually, I was actually going to say, yeah, like, I wouldn't have blamed you at all for throwing a plug in for 99.5 tonight. So <laughs> Kyle's going to be handling all the games on 99.5 in the fall, so make sure to tune in and listen to him, too. I mean, you're going to have a ton of good games. So we yeah. got Fairbury next week. Yeah, we got Fairbury playing Tri-County at home next Thursday. I mean, so it is going to be on the same night as the Beatrice game, so I wouldn't expect <laughs> any of you listeners not to come listen to the Beatrice game. But, yeah, well, yeah. We'll, see, we'll see how Fairbury does next week. Yeah, you did a good job, and I'm sure you know people will be uh, pretty happy to hear those games, too. So yep. good luck this year. Thanks, Hope I it appreciate goes well for you. it. I appreciate it. And thanks for having me here. Really appreciate it. Jake Bartecki, I bet he's doing a phenomenal job on the TV side. He'll be back here in the radio booth next week for the game against Gross next Thursday. Well, the final score, Elkhorn North 21 and Beatrice 3. Thank you for joining us in the broadcast booth. We will see you next week. Have a good night, everybody.